by faith Abraham, by faith Moses, and on and on through the end of Hebrews. So it was firmly established. In Ro but see, they never get to the part where in Romans chapter 4 that corresponds with Hebrews 11, right exactly, the diligently seeking after God, he rewards those, giving Abraham the promise of the, the, being the father of many nations that walk in the steps of faith, the steps of Abraham, firmly established in their faithfulness to him. They never get to that part in Romans chapter 4, starting in verse 12, where he walked in the steps of faith. It wasn't a matter, he was uncircumcised, and circumcision, uncircumcision means nothing but a new creation in Christ, like Paul says. So he walked in the steps of faith, he did the deeds of faith, he was firmly persuaded, he was fully confident in God, his belief did not waver, as it goes on to say, throughout the, throughout the rest of the verses, down to 21. And they're being fully convinced that what God had promised he was able to do. So that's the reason, again, established by reckoning. That's why it was accounted to him as righteousness. Not that he was righteous as God, perfect as God. Perfect as God is another straw man. You're perfect in the sense that you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, your neighbor as yourself, that you each according to his ability, like the parable of the talents, five, two, or one. Not everyone has the same ability, but everyone can do according to their own ability not bury their talent and say, well, you know, you created me a sinner, God, I can't do it. No. No, they can't. There's no, there'll be no eternal life. There'll be no forgiveness of past sins and certainly no redemption. So he was reckoned and righteous because in his faith he obeyed, right? So when it gets down to after Noah, what he did, and then in verse 8, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called. There's the whole key. He was firmly established. He was confident. He was fully persuaded. He walked in the steps of faith, did the deeds of faith, Romans chapter 4. And when he was called, he obeyed. So when it says Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness, it's talking about he was firmly established that God was who he said he was, believe that he is, that he's going to reward those that diligently seek after him in faithfulness towards him and their fellow man, which he did. And so the deeds of faith followed that established in the accounting of his righteousness. Like I said, reckoned would be a better word, or accounting. Reckoned or accounting would be a better word than imputed. He believed and obeyed. Therefore, he becomes part of the righteous line, righteous Abel, righteous Noah, a preacher of righteousness, righteous Abraham, and Moses. In Moses. What did he do? He, he was choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasure, passing pleasures of sin for a season. I think the reproaches of Christ, the counting of the cost, the taking up of the cross. If you don't take up your cross and follow after me, you're not worthy of me. How's that faith alone? How striving to enter through the narrow gate? Faith alone. How is the way is narrow and difficult and very few will find that way? And wide is the way that leads to destruction, and many there go that goes that way. How is that faith alone when narrow is the way and difficult is the path that leads to eternal life, and few there be that find it? You see what I'm saying? The gospel that's being preached in our land across our world today is a false gospel for the most part. There's only a handful of people that I've been able to find that other faithful brethren that are fighting the good fight have been able to find over the years that understand this process of redemption and how faith, grace, and redemption works through the repentance process and the working with God so you do not receive this all in vain and no effect and without purpose. It's only a handful of people we've been able to find. And those that we've tried to help and show them the right way reject it and hate us for it, despise us, call us all kinds of names and impugn everything that we say. Nothing will impugn you more than living righteous and upright in Christ Jesus. Just like he told Timothy, those that choose to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Yes, they will. They'll suffer persecution from who? The religious elitist. That's who they'll suffer persecution from. Because they can't stand righteousness. They don't understand the covenant come to put an end to sin. They say a cov the, the covenant was established to cover sin. The, the covenant was established for God to pluck out his own eye and pretend that you're not sinning and you're, you're Jesus instead of, instead of a filthy sinner. 
See, that's how foolish it is. Instead of you plucking out your eye and casting it from you so that you don't end up in the lake of fire, no, no, he, God plucks his own eye out and pretends you're not sinning when you are. See, that's the foolishness that people believe. You wonder why people believe so many foolish things are so easily gullible, and so, so easily taken advantage of and lied to, pandered to by these phony politicians, all these people in the world, the con men everywhere. That's the reason, because they so easily believe a lie. Love not the truth that they might be saved. Take pleasure in unrighteousness, like it says in 2 Thessalonians. See, you got to love the truth, and you got to keep digging into the truth. And when you hear the admonishment of a good, loving brother that comes to you with the truth of the old man dying in repentance, of that root of rebellion being cut out, then listen. Then take heed to that warning. Take heed that perhaps that's the only time you're going to have an opportunity to see and hear. And come to your senses before it's too late. Because many of you are caught in a snare of the devil in all sincerity, in all zeal in what you're doing, but it's spinning your wheels because there's no buddy coming out of their sins. There's no one turning from their wickedness that they may save their life, like the prophets said in Ezekiel and Jeremiah. There's a lot of talk. There's a lot of rhetoric. There's a lot of hollering and screaming. There's a lot of lunacy going on out in the streets and even more in the churches. But no one coming out of sins that we can see. Only these one-on-one -on -one discipleships, these pulling them out of the fire, like Jude said, fearing even your garment to be defiled by the flesh. Only there are we seeing any results and fruit in this last days, if it indeed is the last days, that we face. So I beseech you to think about these things again, these things that I cover again and again and again, that the rebellion must cease once for all, in repentance, before this redemption and remission in this free gift can be given. Because of this process, this dynamic process of faithfulness that works with grace and redemption in God's plan to put an end to sin in your life once for all.